Why are Asian Asian movies considered so much better than Asian American movies? The internet is wondering. That is because you guys are boxed in by the society, but maybe also your own mind. We gotta talk about this meme from Reddit, Andrew. It says, let's be honest, this is pretty accurate. East Asian literature. A government official helps a female prisoner escape with the hopes of infiltrating a rebel group, but ends up falling in love. A gay couple slowly break up during a spur of the moment trip to Iguanza Falls. A business executive is ruined when blackmailers kidnap and chauffeur some by mistake. A working class family scams their way into the lives of a wealthy couple that's gotta be Parasite. There's this really big lizard, Gojira. A samurai asked to commit suicide in the courtyard of a local lord who suspects his motives. And then it goes, Asian American literature. There's this mom, and she's bad. We call it bad mom. All right, so guys, we're gonna get into what this meme actually means. If you guys are into Asian American movies and Asian movies, then definitely hit that like button and share this video. But you know what is not a tired Asian American cliche? Smala finishing oil. Yes, I know that there's a lot of chili crisps out there, guys, but this is a finishing oil. You can pour it out of the bottle. It's very fun to use and very, very tasty. From Sichuan to Sicily, guys, I'm telling you, it is not something you've seen before. Unlike potentially the themes that this meme is talking about, Andrew, how true is this? Is it true that every Asian American movie has to do with filial piety and the struggle between a more Americanized second generation and how they're being raised versus all other Americans? Andrew, Joy Luck Club, Crazy Rich Asians, Farewell, Turning Red, Tiger Tail, Everything Everywhere All at Once, even Shang-Chi as a struggle between the son and the father as a backdrop. You know, I'm not saying that was the first storyline, maybe it was a secondary storyline. Why is this so <clears throat> true? Uh, I guess there's a lot of reasons for it. And guys, a lot of people commented on why it seems like Asian American stories are so what simple. They're so like one dimensional and it always has to do with parent to child because my initial take is that, you know, so you agree with the meme. I agree that it's mostly true. Obviously we're overlooking the Asian action movies right, which are, do very well. But then a lot of people complain, oh, it's all kung fu flicks. Right, it is true when there's Asian action movies, they're not boxing in it. They are typically doing some roundhouse kicks. They're doing right. like kung fu they're, they're or martial Asian, arts. Yeah. Asian martial arts. <clears throat> Asian martial arts, for sure. Um, I guess to me, people are thinking, okay, how do you have Asian characters and have it relate to a mass audience of non-Asians? You're well, talking about in a Hollywood yeah, funded well, movie. Well, how you get non-Asians to relate is that you have to tap into something emotional that is believable for that group. So as in for a lot of black movies, it's a lot of the emotions of uh, being targeted or, you know, like in some of the recent movies, like uh, Get Out like or Us, 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 or Us get, get Out, you know. You and mean then, wh white people doing something yeah. uh, devious yeah. to black people? Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. And then there's a devious plan against black people. Or there was like a lot of hood movies back in the 90s and 2000s. But the hood movies went away. Yes. But so Asians are at that point where they need the parent movies. And it has to do with the parent. It's not a bunch of millennial Asian Americans going on a group. It's not on Asian a trip. euphoria. Yeah. I mean, I would say Joyride was the closest thing because it's a comedy. It was an over-the-top uh, comedy. Beef as well, possibly, right? Beef was kind of there, too. So you're starting to see some projects that are more multidimensional. Right. You're saying stepping out of the filial piety Confucian lane. But the biggest movies end up being the ones that can hit you viscerally in the hearts of everybody, and that has to do with parent to child complexes. And, but does it have to do only with the non-Asians, or is it even what you can sell to the 40-year-old Asian American community yeah. that is possibly still, <clears throat> I'm not saying everybody is, but there's a portion that's very vocal <clears throat> about being hung up, about bringing stinky lunches to school, yeah, et cetera, yeah. et cetera, which is also a tired theme that I saw people bring up in the comments section, which we're gonna get to. People are saying that happened in ABC too, which yeah. is a new Disney Plus show. Oh yeah, ABC. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm saying that it's a. I'm saying these filial piety movies that to me and you and possibly some other more sophisticated media consumers seem so boring and tired cliches. They're still appealing to that 40 year old crowd that wants to trauma dump from having the sticky. <clears throat> yeah, and to be boxes. fair, that 40 to 60 year old mm -hmm. Asian American crowd, uh, they're influential. They, but they're influential. They vote. They have disposable income, but they also they didn't get to experience K-pop. They miss the whole Asian wave thing. So to them, now they're getting an Asian wave of content. And some of them watch our channel, to be honest. Some 40 or 50 year olds do watch our yeah, channel. Yeah, I'm not dissing you guys if those are the if you want to watch 20 more 
of the filial yeah, piety. I guess what I'm saying is I'm just explaining <clears throat> that they had so little Asian content that this is the Asian content that they that still sticks with them. That like still touches maybe their heart. Joyride and beef does not appeal as much because those are dealing with such like millennial third. Or more Americanized, problems. almost like third generation. Like yeah. Ali Wong is like third gen or whatever mm -hmm. like that. I guess is there some example of movies that are outside of this, Andrew? Can you I know that you are talking about this movie called Unspoken that is an American movie that casts a Chinese star. Almost in like a taken type yeah, of movie. Yeah, it's right? it's like a it's like a half Chinese, half American movie that's coming out in 2024. I just saw the trailer of it, guys. Unspoken 2024. Look it up. It's got a big Chinese action star in it. It's basically about a father whose daughter comes to America to study to abroad. Internet to be an international student. She gets killed. He comes over to America and like wreaks havoc while trying to solve the crime. Like Taken, almost like a Liam Neeson type character, right? Kind of, it's like, uh, kind of like Jackie Chan's The Foreigner, actually. Right, he's on a war path. Yeah. That's, but it's Revenge. kind of rooted, unfortunately, in a lot of real stories. Yeah, I think that's a really cool movie that's gonna come out. Yeah, I guess I could compare this filial piety par parental Asian movie phase, Andrew, back to your point, John Singleton, the 1990s, Boys in the Hood, uh, Menace to Society, Above the Rim, there was all these movies about the inner city that Hollywood was funding, but it almost felt like at that time, even if you were a black actor that wasn't from the inner city like Cuba Gooding Jr., you got put into that lane because those were the only movies yeah. they were making. Dude, how many black actors were asked to like play basketball when they like didn't play basketball? You know, like nowadays they would just find a kid who can play basketball. Right, right, right. I guess what I'm saying is it's like, it goes to show you that there's like these ebbs and flows and these candles that got to burn. And like you said, the hood movie candle, at least in Hollywood, now there's power and stuff like that. But like it kind of burned out on its own and then it moved on to other candles mm -hmm. that had to burn. Anyway, um, yeah, let's just get into the comments section over here. Somebody said, Asia's in Asia are pulling from a way wider and deeper pool of concepts since they just happen to be the majority dominant race over there. So basically they don't get typecast because they have every cast. Mm -hmm. They have yeah. every lane available to their, at their disposal. Yeah, you have to understand like the amount of Asian Americans in America is just like a drop in the bucket compared to all the Asians in Asia. We're like such a small group. So even for us to be this influential as we are, it's somewhat impressive. I think, mm -hmm. I think you can take some solace, David, that we are just a drop in the bucket as far as a number of population, but because we're in America and we've achieved that Asian Americans have achieved something in America, we become disproportionately influential across the world. How much do you think people need to slow their expectations or is it okay as we get more representation, even though it's like still stuck on that candle that we become unhappy with that candle? You know, you know like it's tough because to, at one point you had nothing, now you have something, but then you're like, dang, it's all the same theme or like 90% of them fit into the same theme. How grateful should you be right, is right. kind of what you're asking. I don't know. How do you feel? How grateful has your gratefulness for the content changed over the past 15, 10 years. Right. Somebody said, you know, yeah, you guys are right. There is not a 50 shades of gray, but Asian, but there is stuff like beef and joyride, which is a little bit more uh, getting laughs other than playing yourself out like Ken Jong and Bobby Lee did. Mm -hmm. But maybe they were just subject to what were the dynamics of the era as well. Other this long, people were writing really long comments for this thread, right? Somebody said, it's just our situation of being a small minority. So the only thing that makes us different is how we compare our childhood being so different from everybody else around us. That's just where the game is at right now. So, so he was kind of putting the blame on the Asian American writers like, why are we just writing stories about how our childhood was so different than our white neighbor? Right. Do you think that that's true? That like, like you said, like the 40 year olds that are getting their movies made and picked up by the studios, those are the stories that they're telling. Yeah. For, uh, I would say so. Yeah. I guess they were probably not from the time, Andrew, where international students were even coming over. And then especially all the terrible things that have been happening, unfortunately. Um, somebody said, for there to be movies, there has to be original IP and there has, and there is good Asian American IP and literature to be made into movies, but nobody really reads it, at least not as much as they should. Mm. And this guy was kind of blaming the Asian American community for not supporting the unique Asian American IP that does exist because Asian Americans don't consume Asian American content, mm. like on the literature side. Right, right, right. 
Um, somebody said, was pointing out, yep, look at all the highly rated books that could be optioned into movies right here, but how many of you guys support those? And somebody said, I can't stand Asian America media at this point. It's just rehashing the same old, same old. Somebody said, man, yeah, man, it's all about white kids said my lunch stinks. I hate that. Um, are you sick of it? Yes or no for yourself, Andrew? Uh, we're having this debate about should you just be grateful from how far the game has come or can you be mad I mean, where I the think, game is at? I think you can be grateful while only supporting the things that you like. Like, so I you're am, saying we're not at the point anymore where we have to support everything that comes out. I'm, I am grateful to see the progress because I think that if you include material from Asia, there is a lot of Asian content. You cannot... If you put it in the same pool. Yeah, but... I don't think you should separate it as much. I mean, dude, Asian America is like such a small part. So I think like we're doing pretty good. Not that I'm not saying we should stop fighting, but it's just like, you know, the content wise, like we're getting, we just have to do better ourselves. Like, I don't think we're, it's as much as we're being held back anymore. I think there was at a time when we were being super held back. But I think nowadays, if the story is good and you can get into the right hands, it's got a chance. No, you're right. I mean, did you know a scientific sample size is one out of 14, which means you essentially have to be 7%? Asian Americans just this year on the census became 7%. So it's almost like we just became a scientifically like notable population based yeah, off Yeah, of but I think we've been overrepresented in the power and income, so I think that's why I think we almost feel like we're we're like a uh, 10%. Right. Um, and anyway, here are some concepts we'd like to see Hollywood make some Asian American movies of. Here, let me throw this one out, Andrew. Gen Z TikTok Asians. This is probably a really... Asians are overrepresented on TikTok, right? TikTok's obviously a Chinese platform, but, you know, that's debated or whatever. But there's just a lot of Asians in the Gen Z making TikTok, what, yes or no? What, what I would say is, like, if there was, like, a movie about Gen Z TikTok Asians, I think... Uh, the Gen Z TikTok Asian would just be one of the characters. I don't know about watching a whole movie about it because then you're about yeah, yeah, yeah. the influencer uh, world. It seems stupid. I hate watching about this, movies about that. An influencer world movie <laughs> where the main guy's like a, a wannabe urban white kid, right? Which is pretty common with the broccoli cut, no cap, no keezy. But the second character is an Asian. Yeah, sure. Uh, AZN thugs from the 1990s versus uh, modern day AZNs in Asian frats yeah. and sororities. Yeah, I mean, there was that movie Bang Bang that went around the Asian American circuit that we, I watched that movie like three times. Uh, ABG was a pilot. For ABC, right? Asian BB Girl was a pilot. That ended up ABC. not getting picked up, right? Didn't get picked up. So there's been some attempts at it. Are you talking about the but AZN it, world that is more again, like inter, not like yeah, trying to go I to Harvard. I feel like it almost would be like that would be a, the secondary character that you delve into. Okay. You're versus like the first character would still be your kind of like typical Asian. Right. Trying to go to Berkeley, but maybe they're in a, a lambdas at Berkeley would just more torn to the Asian side. Anyway, um, somebody said something at a boba shop, but with some K-pop love story. Why can't Asians execute a K-drama tier story, but in English amongst Asian Americans? Have you ever heard of Wong Fu Productions? That's what Wong Fu try, does try to do. Have you ever heard of Wong Fu Productions? Guys, how many mm -hmm. boba shops have they filmed that? How many boba shops have we filmed that? Socioeconomic struggle, but like Parasite, but with Asian Americans. All right, man, here's a story. This inspires me. Yeah, something, it's or about- class struggle. Class struggle between the rich international class and a middle class Asian American, kind of like crazy rich Asians, but not having to go back to Asia. It takes place in America. Ooh, and it, that 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 storyline is possible in 2023. Dude, and, and the rich kid either lives at USC or and no, lives so, in LIC and goes to NYU. So you depict that there's this rich international kid who's like an asshole, and then there's a humble international kid, and then there's the Asian Americans, and there's like this whole triangle clash type thing that's going on. They should show the different tiers of Asian America as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, Andrew, a story centering around rich Japanese baseball players somehow either making it an inspirational drama like Rudy or you can have a bunch of crazy stuff happen. Because oh, obviously, man. some of the highest paid players in the MLB history are Japanese now. Dude, like an entourage type series about like Ichiro or like the a supposed like Shohei's life. Yeah, and then in you America. can show him going back to Japan, but also his life in L.A., which is probably yeah, pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah. I bet you Lil Tokyo is about to be lit. Sawtell is going to be crazy for the next 10 years. Um, some inter-Chinese drama between mainlanders 
inter-mainlander, provincial beef, Taiwan, Singapore, Hong Kong. I said, you hear so much about it in the news. Why not? All right, so let's just say this. The story is that war breaks out in Asia. Okay, crazy. And a group of Asian-American friends are asked to pick sides. But they're Asian-American. No, but they're like, maybe they're born there. They came here, you know what right, I mean? They they're secured U.S. Here. citizenship, but they oh, still... It's like, they still have some allegiances. Right. How do they feel as a friend group? That's drama. Yo, that's Taiwanese crazy. friend, a mainland Chinese friend whose parents are from Beijing. And then you got Vietnamese friends. You have a Korean friend, a Japanese friend. And uh, and then uh, you throw in uh, an Asian from Russia. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, like a Siberian. Yeah. Um, somebody said, uh, how about this? How about this? Something where just your typical Asian nerd is on a quest to become the coolest kid in the school. Yeah. yeah. You're, not, you're not excited by that? I think that, you know why I like that? Because you could sell it to Hollywood. Because like we said, there's yeah, a lot of concepts that would be good. And then there's the concepts you can sell to the people who make the reads. I think that one's just going to be so like blue pill typical. Oh, he becomes kind of cool. No, I'm not saying that. This theme hasn't been done before, but when have you seen it executed? Because you know way? he's gonna Chan learn. Dunk was kind of like that. You know he's gonna I learn like how to Chan rap. Dunk really wasn't. You know he's gonna learn how to rap, and then he's gonna have to like rap and make a song about the school. And Listen, press if you're day. a rapping nerd, guys, I hate to break it to you, Kevin G. Robin, guy, it don't work. It don't work. It works a little bit, but it doesn't really work. How about this? Something involving CGI and the Chinese zodiac animals becoming alive. Or, or a world where the Chinese Zodiac animals are interacting with each other Yo. and they're anthropomorphized. Make it a horror film. When it's your year, that animal comes back and tries to kill you. Right, because theoretically in Chinese uh, tradition, it's bad when it's your year. Yeah, which is always weird. So it's like a Chinese horror film where it's like, it's year of the snake. It's my year. And then a whole bunch of snakes come to me in my dreams. And then they come into real life. And then you turn into a snake. And I start seeing snakes right, everywhere. Right. Um, last but not least, Andrew, I got one where Asians are in, in California are just acting like euphoria. You know, just having the typical crazy ups and downs. I don't know. Oh, oh, okay. How about this? They, they're euphoria at school, but then they go home and they got to be traditional. So it shows the duality of them trying to be their edgy selves and hide their uh, right. secret lifestyles of selling drugs, doing doing all this stuff. A little bit like Better Luck Tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah kind of like something. that, but but it, it, it still involves the parents. You can yo, sell this. Yo, is it noteworthy that the first Asian-American movie to ever get Hollywood distribution was Better Luck Tomorrow, and Better Luck Tomorrow does not deal with filial piety in terms of actually showing the parents. It doesn't really show that many parents, you're right. Yeah, it was more about Asian kids from the nerd life trying to be Anyways, dancers. guys, which of those movie ideas do you think could be successful? Maybe someone should write a book or a story based off of it. I agree with your one uh, suggestion, Andrew, as my final takeaway. Watch content from Asia as well, because Asian America is a candle that's going to burn at its own pace, just like the hood movies burnt out or whatever in the 90s, even though I liked them, but, you know, I guess, you know, I could see why it was lopsided. Uh, I would say that it, it's just a candle that's got to burn. So look into content from Asia if you want to see Asian faces live the whole wide breadth of uh, life stories and even into the fantasy realm. Let us know what you think of this in the comment section below. Why are Asian Asian movies so much more diverse in theme and consummate and execution than Asian American movies? Are you happy, sad about it, or it is what it is? Let us know what you think in the comment section below. We encourage the debate. Until next time, we're the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.